Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Estrella virtual visit series. I'm Allison Campbell with Estrella Consulting, and I am so excited to welcome Danny Tejas from the Art Academy of Cincinnati. Our virtual visit series is designed to introduce you all to a variety of colleges and allow for us to get to know the institutions and their staff in a more personal way. So thank you, Danny, for joining us. Um, do you mind taking just a few moments to tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've worked at the Art, in Art Academy of Cincinnati? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have been there for around seven years. Um, I started off um, being the admissions assistant and then slowly worked my way up to the associate director of admissions. Um, and I actually have my degree from the Art Academy as well. Um, I graduated in 2016 with a degree in art history and painting. So um, I took about a year off to kind of explore the world, the country, and then I uh, wanted to come back and work with students to help um, introduce them to art school and especially the art academy that's great um so it sounds like you are fully invested you're an alum you came back and now you know are just really feeling driven to help students kind of figure out their own career path and their own passion so that's really awesome and i feel like a lot of these you know we've done a handful of these interviews and uh over the last few weeks a lot of alums are coming mm -hmm. back because they just have like that sense of pride and they know what the institution can do for their students. So that's really cool. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's right in the name. So Art Academy of Cincinnati. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, just how the campus is situated in Cincinnati or if for some of our, our viewers, they're not from Ohio. So tell us a little bit about just the campus, the community, the city. And then I have a couple other questions about the school in itself. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, it's more specifically the neighborhood of Over the Rhine. Um, it's about, it's kind of like our arts district. Um, it has all um, Germanate and Italianate architecture around. So it feels almost kind of like a mini Brooklyn in the Midwest um, because we have a protectorate um, over all the architecture in over the Rhine. So they're legally not allowed to tear down buildings. They just have to revitalize them. Um, so we really are lucky that we have such a really beautiful campus because we think of Cincinnati and over the Rhine as an extension of our campus. Um, and with that, if not 100% sure where Cincinnati is, we are in the very um, southwest corner of Ohio. So we um, touch Indiana as well as Kentucky. I love Over the Rhine. I was actually in Cincinnati a few months ago for work, and it's just such a cool, eclectic neighborhood. Um, I mean, there were so many people out, and it was like a Thursday at two o'clock, but I mean, people were just like eating al fresco on the patio, and mm -hmm. we went to the most adorable art supply shop. Oh, so, yeah. Was, did you go to, I'm thinking it was probably either Suitors or Indigo Hippo. Uh, suitors. It was like a small family owned and, and the guy was so kind, but it was such a cool area. And um, again, if you if you're visiting campuses, we always tell our Australian students to definitely visit campuses, but you'll fall in love with Over the Rhine, especially if you're okay with a more urban setting for a school. I mean, I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's urban, but still feels safe. And just like kind of, like you said, kind of like a hipster art centric community. So that's a really mm -hmm. cool place to be. That's great. Can you tell us a little bit about the enrollment? Like what type of students are coming to the Art Academy of Cincinnati and how many? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for us, we really welcome students of all backgrounds um, as well as um, rural areas, uh, urban areas. We really have students kind of coming from all around. Um, with that, we are we fluctuate um, between 200 and 250 um, students enrolled at the Art Academy, primarily because we really are focused on having it be a smaller um, school size, because that way you really have the ability to get to know your faculty, your peers, and they also get to know you and your work as well. And being an artist, you really need a lot of individualized attention. Um, so this is a really great opportunity to be in a smaller size classroom. And I know for myself, I had come from a high school of around 3,000 students, and I was just over being bombarded and having large class sizes. So for me, I really wanted to find something a lot smaller. Um, obviously, some people want to have large campus experiences, and if that's what you want, go for it, absolutely. But for us, we really prioritize um, having students who um, 
you know, I think that sometimes people think that art school is um, shaved mohawks or green hair. And we absolutely do have students like that. Um, but we also have students that are interested in sports or wanting to go on to do design for large corporate um, companies as well. So um, you might think that the art school student might be a little bit more artsy and we do, but we also have students that come in and um, they're, they love baseball and such. So we really prioritize students coming as they are and really finding their niche while they're here. That's a really good point. Um, I think, like you said, there's, you know, people that are definitely more on like that, like true artistic side of the spectrum, but then you have people that are looking to maybe get into like digital media or, you know, take their work into like the business realm and they don't want to do like studio art or whatnot. But one thing I'd love to talk with you more about and just kind of get your take on is that, you know, we have heard, and I'm sure you could, you know, they're either confirm or deny this, you know, the art schools are so intensive, you know, that you really need to eat, breathe, sleep art. Um, there's not going to be a lot of opportunities for um, like core curriculum classes. Like you're there to learn art and it's super intensive. And to what you said about just that personalized setting, you know, there's going to be small classes. You're going to get like that mentor one-on-one -on -one mentorship, which is incredible. But um, if you're a student who like kind of likes art, can see yourself like dabbling in it. Like, is this the type of setting for you? Or do you need to be like 100% on board with art? Like, what would you say? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I feel that you are most likely you need to be 100% on board with art, um, because you are really truly going to have it be involved in every aspect of your time at the art academy. Um, so even with that, your class size or your class structure is going to be your freshman year, um, is going to be really focusing on the elements, principles of art and design, learning craft, learning skills, um, in a general sense. And then, um, your uh, sophomore and junior year, you're going to be really diving into your major and your major electives, as well as other classes you're interested in. And then your senior year, you're really starting to think about your thesis and what um, type of show or presentation are you really wanting to show the community. Um, so with that, there are opportunities to come in freshman year, even sophomore year and be, you know, I'm not 100% sure what major I want to be in. I really enjoy everything. But um, if you're a little bit more on the fence of like, I like art, but I'm, I'm never, you know, it's not my favorite class, um, then maybe you could um, sort of dabble in something else. Um, we have a lot of students that transfer in um, because sometimes they also decide, oh, well, I really thought I wanted to go into even something like veterinary science or something. And then they're like, I really missed art. And I actually realized that's what I want to do. Um, yeah. So we definitely try to um, let you know ahead of time that you'll be making art even in your um, liberal arts classes. Um, so okay. we focus on um, the humanities and a lot of reading and writing. Um, so you'll actually take classes freshman year called artist as reader and artist as writer, um, which are exactly what they sound like, where you learn how to read through an artist's viewpoint, write through one as well. Um, even in classes like zoology, um, students keep a sketchbook of every animal they learn about. But um, to say, with all that being said, I will say that um, we also really encourage students to be boundary breakers. And you might be a painting and drawing major, but maybe you just want to work in sculptures. Or maybe you're just a creative thinker, but you don't necessarily think that maybe a traditional school or pathway works best for you. There's definitely um, a lot of really great advantages to going to art school. Um, even if you, like I said earlier, like you're not a hundred percent sure what you want to do, but you're like, I'm just a creative person, period. Then I mm -hmm. do think you should um, take a chance and see um, if art school can help you out with that. That's awesome. That's great to know. And you've alluded to, you know, you said freshman, sophomore, junior year is you know, are all of the degree programs at Art Academy of Cincinnati, are they four-year programs or do you offer any two-year programs? Yeah. So we, um, our primary uh, degree is the Bachelor's of Fine Arts, which would be four years. We do have an Associates of Graphic Design, which is two years. Um, however, the that is the only associates we offer and it's only in design. Um, so if you were coming in and being like, I would like an associates, but I want to do 
um, photography or painting, um, we don't necessarily have the opportunity for students to do that. Um, as well as being a um, associate's degree, you don't have four years to really experiment. So you're really heavily focused primarily on just design. You won't necessarily have the opportunity per se to explore into different mediums. Um, and then we do have a master's of art education. Um, however, um, that's usually uh, art teachers coming back in the summertime to work. So I, we primarily focus on the bachelor, bachelors of fine arts and the associates. Okay. Um, would you be able to, I mean, if you miss a few, that's no big deal, but some of the majors in the bachelors of fine arts program yeah, absolutely. So we focus on creative writing, design, drawing and painting, photography, printmaking, um, sculpture, animation, um, well, digital arts animation. And then we also have um, two minors. Um, so we have um, art history as a minor, and then film, video, and audio is also a minor. Um, however, it might seem a little bit like a small list, but our program is really robust. So you could come in being a animation major, but take classes in creative writing, sculpture, photography, um, really anything a student is wanting to investigate, we really encourage them to do so. Okay, great. Um, so if the bulk of your students are the four-year students uh, seeking the Bachelor of Fine Arts, do you offer um, housing on campus? Are you residential campus or are they encouraged to find housing elsewhere in Cincinnati? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we actually do have dorms um, that are going to be diagonal from the street. Um, so our campus is on Jackson Street and as well as our housing. And with that, we prioritize the housing to feel more like apartment style. So students have a full kitchen, access to laundry. Um, and with that, it's a, we want students to feel like they're part of the community rather than a freshman, maybe with a bathroom down the hall, which if that's what you want to do, go for it. Absolutely. But for our students, we really want it to feel um, them. We want students to feel empowered and encouraged as soon as they step onto campus. And we feel that having um, apartment style accommodations also um, helps with that. Um, the average uh, students to a dorm is around three. Sometimes that goes up to five. However, if it's a five um, person dorm, they will be lofted. So there will be a spiral staircase in there. Oh, cool. That sounds awesome. Um, okay. What types of trends are you seeing as far as like your enrollment? Are you seeing um, schools like high schools that are more like art centric high schools or are they coming from like public schools? Do you get more of like a regional draw or are you finding you get students from all over the country? Just like what's your enrollment looking like with like you said, 200 to 250 students. Yeah, absolutely. So we definitely um, are very popular in the tri-state area, especially Northern Kentucky, um, because they at the moment don't have um, an accredited four-year art school in Kentucky. Um, um, so we really prioritize making time to really investigate there. However, um, we do have students coming all the way from um, Massachusetts, uh, Alaska. Um, we've had students from Vietnam. Um, so we definitely do have, I would say the majority comes from the Midwest, um, but we do have students coming from afar as well. So it also helps with us so that way, um, if you still have that college experience of getting to know people from different backgrounds, from different um, areas of life that maybe um, students hadn't necessarily grown up with. Yeah, that's, and I, honestly, like you said, with having, you know, a student from Massachusetts or, you know, from the West Coast, all it takes is one to have a really positive experience. And then they tell a friend and they want to get far away from home or they come right. and visit. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, it does word of mouth is sometimes your best like your best kept secret, honestly. And I'm sure, like you said, if you get just a few kids from places outside of the tri-state area, it might continue to grow the popularity. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so can you talk to me a little bit about scholarships? So say if a student is interested in attending the Art Academy um, and just want to know what how that looks financially, like what would be the next steps for them? Or maybe could you talk about merit aid as far as like grades or a portfolio? 
Yeah. So for us, we prioritize on having a really streamlined application as well as access to scholarships. Um, so for us, we have an application which is free on our website or Common App. Um, we um, prioritize a GPA of a 2.0 or higher. Um, we do not take or really accept um, ACT or SAT unless a student's um, GPA is below a 2.0. Um, and with that, uh, we do an entrance scholarship, which is based off the student's portfolio submission. So we look for eight to 10 pieces of anything under the umbrella of fine art, creative writing, or design. Um, it can be a combination of mediums. It could be all one type. Um, really, we want to see the work that the student is the most excited and passionate about because, again, that's going to be what their entrance scholarship is based off of. And that can cover anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. Um, and really, we grade on a scale of one to 10. Um, one through uh, five is not passing. We ask for more work to be submitted. And then six through 10 um, is going to be accepted. Um, and if you are not necessarily a 10 out of 10 the first time around, students are more than welcome to come and submit more work um, to submit um, so they can work their way up to get more scholarship. However, if a student's okay. a 10 out of 10, they're great. Um, there's not much uh, to go. Um, we do provide scholarships for scholastic awards or governor's awards if students are involved with that at their high school. Mm -hmm. um, we also have um, vision scholarships, which is in addition to the regular scholarship or excuse me, regular application we have. Um, so with this, this is for students that are either first generation or Pell eligible, and it, they are full tuition and fees. It doesn't cover wow. housing, but tuition and fees will be covered. Um, and with that, we ask for their regular application and their materials. And then also um, we ask for them to write an essay. They have a, a couple different prompts they can find of essays as well as submitting additional work. Um, so, and usually we um, have a deadline that's cut off in the springtime. And then it takes us maybe a week or two to go through all the applications and decide, um, but it is a really great option for students. That's great. That's really, you know, breaking down some barriers to access for students. Um, my question is, you know, if you have a, I think you were just referring to the scholarship piece as far as like the, the grading, but I could be wrong. If you have a student who just really loves art and maybe they're from a high school where they don't have an art class because it's been cut by, um, you know, they, the budget cuts or they just don't have like the access. Is there a way for a student to get in with maybe without a portfolio or maybe with like a subpar portfolio of things they've kind of scrapped together. Um, you know, they have just have this burning passion for art, but they don't have a lot to show for it. Is that still an option? Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely something that we do see, um, especially um, students that maybe they don't have any access to even um, an art class or an outside of school um, opportunity or even students that are really passionate in a certain um, subject matter or even um, medium, but they don't have resources at their school to do so. Um, for example, I've seen students that have no access to cameras, but they use their cell phones to take cameras mm -hmm. or pictures, excuse me. Um, so when something like that happens, we really encourage students to have a conversation with admissions um, to either um, reach out for a virtual review or an in-person one. So that way we can kind of get their story and their background to understand their um, the significance of uh, opportunities that not have been available for them. Um, because sometimes if they would just submit work on slide room and maybe it's not necessarily up to par with our standards of acceptance, but when mm -hmm. we actually get to hear students and their thoughts and their passion, um, that really is influential for us. But it's also essential to um, because we never necessarily say, this is your final review, you can never do it again. So students can also come in and say, hey, I don't want this to be my official review, but I would love to talk to you about my work and get some advice. And then that way the student can then go um, home and maybe take a couple of weeks um, to create a body of work based off those suggestions. So we definitely try to make um, it as, as, as accessible as possible. That's really helpful. 
no. I mean, I think we had a an arts webinar in the spring um, and we had someone from Chapman who was talking about the film application process. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you know, to be in a film major, you know, typically, and just to have that access as a high schooler, that's expensive to have like high grade quality equipment to have studio space. And she's like, we have so many kids that we just tell, like, use your iPhone. Like right. we don't care about the quality necessarily. We care about the passion, the vision, the, you know, what's like Absolutely. Just the will yeah. of like knowing that like, I'm a little bit disadvantaged right now with this, but if I can like put together my best work with what I have, that's what I'm going to do. So I appreciate that you're just, you know, allowing students the opportunity to have those conversations um, because, you know, there might be a real like diamond in the rough of a student that is, would be fantastic at your school. But again, if they don't have the resources or the money or whatnot, that's glad, I'm glad that they're not going to be disadvantaged in that way. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So could you talk to us just briefly about what the application process looks like? like you had mentioned um, that you're on Common App or you have a specific app um, and that you would prefer, I don't know if it's work preferred or recommended to have that portfolio. Um, what's the timeline looking like? Yeah, so we have um, rolling admissions, but for the most part, we're looking at a June 1st deadline. Um, however, I always like to say the sweet spot is really between um, November all the way into um, around March, just because um, the sooner or the longer you wait, um, you sometimes can be put on a wait list for housing or a wait list for classes. So if you're really prioritizing that, then it's a really great option to really kind of get your ducks in a row a little bit sooner. Um, but students can apply to the school through Common App as well as our website. Um, and with that, they are both free because um, we really prioritize a free application. And then um, students are able to either submit their portfolio um, through Slide Room on our website immediately at the same time, or if they want to prioritize applying and then putting us a portfolio or vice versa, you know, we really try to um, have students go at their own pace. So um, really, uh, that, that we're pretty flexible with it. Okay. And you actually kind of segued right into my next question. You mentioned the caps on housing or scheduling. Do you have any caps on particular programs? I mean, I'm sure capacity, you know, having enough supplies or a studio space for students is important. So do you have any caps on specific programs? Right. Yeah, we don't necessarily um, for programs. If you, we, um, definitely sometimes have wait lists for classes. Um, and especially, you know, you're gonna have an advisor that students work with um, from freshman year all the way to senior year that help them um, really navigate through um, just uh, their education, but also through scheduling their courses. Um, so for the most part, um, a lot of the uh, classes, at least for freshman year, they don't necessarily need to worry about. It's when they get towards their junior or senior year where they might um, definitely need to squeeze into a class. Um, it's really first come first serve but the art academy um, and that goes for housing and parking. Um, we, I do say we will prioritize commuters to have parking accessible to them first and then um, students in housing who do have a car um, are able to also jump in on that. Um, but we definitely have the luxury of being um, small. So students don't necessarily have to worry about running around trying to figure out who do I contact for this? Who do I talk about with that? Um, yeah. so we try to definitely um, make sure that they understand this is your designated counselor um, and you can go to them anytime you need, whether that's through text message, um, email, phone and such. Okay. Um yeah, that's that's a good answer to that. Um, do you have any more competitive programs? Um, or are they I, all equally weighted? They are pretty equally weighted. Um, I will say there definitely are some majors that are um very popular. Um, digital arts, animation, illustration, design. Um, they are incredibly popular. But also, I would say um art painting and drawing and even photography, creative writing, um, those are definitely right up there as well. Um, and with that, 
we don't have students apply to certain majors. We particularly prioritize having students apply to the school at large. Um, but what's nice about our program is that it's transdisciplinary. So if a student is a photo major, they could take classes in sculpture, design, illustration, whatever they're really wanting to focus on, they're more than welcome to. Okay, very good. All right, I have two more questions. Um, my next one will be, how do you help students with post-graduation placement? So they're done with their four-year degree, they wanna get a job, how do you help them do that? Yeah, well, we're going to start as soon as a student's sophomore year to really work with them to have them understand um, what is next for them, whether that's through an internship, a co-op, a study abroad opportunity, um, because students don't know what they don't know. And it's also our primary job, not only to make them the best artist, designer, writer as possible, but also to make sure that they understand what do they want to do, but most importantly, what do they enjoy doing? Um, because going into the career field, I think it's so essential and it's an art academy mission to make sure that you're in a good spot. Um, so even if you do an internship in something and you realize, oh, I actually really didn't enjoy that, totally fine. Um, mm -hmm. It's nice to understand what you do want to do and what you don't want to do while you still have your community of faculty and peers as well. Um, and with that, we also have classes like senior seminar or even one that's called life after art school where you learn how to do your taxes. Um, so if you sell a painting for $600, you need to pay taxes on that. So what does that look like? But also thinking about how is it to set up an LLC, do copyrights, um, because there's a lot of business that goes up behind, um, especially um, fine artists. So we really try to make sure that they understand the tools and techniques for success. And then also um, we prioritize students um, starting to kind of go out into the world um, sooner as well, whether that be through that internship or co-op, really starting to make um, a statement or put their foot in the door with a couple different companies. Um, and then we do have a really robust um, department of um, professional development where students can go to say, um, what are some opportunities that are available at this moment? Or how do I navigate um, Indeed or Glassdoor to find opportunities that are tailored more towards me? So we definitely um, have that. And then also we have um, an email that that office sends out as well that is just job opportunities. And that also, I believe, goes to alumni as well. That's great. You're very, very spot on with, you know, how... I actually talked about this with the, the girl that does my hair. Um, she's like, you know, sometimes people that are like in the artist space or like a small business space, or maybe they are contractors or something like they're really good at their trade. They're really good at their job, but they were never properly trained on how to be a business owner or how to do right. that type of stuff. And that's usually their downfall. You know, like if you are a really good hairstylist, but you struggle with executive functioning of scheduling clients of the point of sale, like things like that. Like those are things that she's like, I never was taught at right. hair school. Like those mm -hmm. are things I had to take lumps on. I did a class at the community college because she owns the salon. She's like, that was stuff. And that wasn't like enjoyable to me. So I really appreciate that you're doing some of that back end work with your students to just ensure that they're going to be like successful human beings, successful business owners, like doing the right things. So that's a really good point that you made. And I appreciate you mentioning that. Awesome. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. All right. My last question, I want to make sure I'm cog cognizant of your time um, is who would you say, and if you don't have an answer for this, this is totally fine, um, is the most interesting alumnus of the Art Academy of Cincinnati? Do you have oh. one that really stands out? I, I would probably say our most well-known one is probably Charlie Harper. Um, you may not necessarily recognize the name, but you have probably seen his um, artwork before. Um, he does... Um, well, he did. He's since passed because um, he uh, attended the Art Academy in the 40s. Um, but with that, um, it's a lot of design geometric with animals. Um, it's pretty popular. A lot of times um, zoos have um, his artwork or museums have a few pieces. Um, so he definitely was a boundary breaker in the fact of um, how to 
he combined graphic design, um, printmaking, as well as illustration together. So I definitely recommend looking him up because I'm sure um, you've probably seen at least one of his pieces before. Definitely. I, def I will be Googling Charlie Harper right after we finish. So, well, thank you, Danny. It was so nice meeting you. I really appreciate the insight into the Art Academy of Cincinnati, and I'm sure the other Estrella viewers will as well. And I really appreciate that we have someone in the art school space because I believe that you are our first one. Oh, awesome. But yeah, but I hope our paths cross soon. And again, thank you so much for taking the time. And if you are watching this and if you want more information about the Art Academy, make sure you reach out to Danny. And if uh, she's not the person that you need to be speaking with, I'm sure she'll direct you to the right place. So thank you again and have a great rest of your week. Awesome. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.